Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I'm pretty late to this Ryzen 3 party and so I had a hard time deciding what to do for this video. I mean you've seen reviews, comparisons and even budget builds but I still wanted you to hear my Ryzen 3 1200 story because well as I quickly discovered this $100 chip is very good for the price. So as I was swapping out my i5-4460 combo to slot this Ryzen setup inside my case I thought why not make that the subject of comparison. Don't get me wrong, this video is more of a product of my curiosity than anything else, but it should help you to understand how capable the cheapest Ryzen 3 really is. The AM4 setup you see here is based on the 1200 CPU, sitting inside a B350 Tomahawk motherboard and accompanied by 8GB of 2400MHz DDR4. The i5 setup consists of the 4460 with an H81 MP33 board and 8GB of 1600MHz DDR3. I thought about trying to match RAM speeds for fairer comparison, but it wouldn't make sense because that's not representative of a real world scenario. If you're buying into the AM4 platform, you get newer features and the advantages of faster RAM. My intention isn't an apples to apples comparison, rather just a way of showing you how the $100 Ryzen 3 fits into the grand scheme of things. After all, this is still a Ryzen 3 review, just with something else thrown in for an extra a bit of spice. My Ryzen 1200 is sitting within an MSI B350 board and although you could opt for a socket A320 AM4 board which is cheaper, B350 gives you the overclocking option which is definitely where this CPU shines, as you'll soon see, and I'd recommend a B350 board right off the bat. So just how good is the Ryzen 3 1200? Well I'm sure you've already seen, but let's find out. So I'll be including results from the Ryzen 3 1200 at stock, overclocked to 3.8 GHz, as well as my old i5-4460 which of course can't be overclocked. We started off with Cinebench R15 which scored as follows. As you can see the stock Ryzen fell behind my old i5 by a little, but when we overclocked it to 3.8 GHz it actually scored better in both the single and multi-threaded performance tests. I didn't think overclocking would make such a difference, but remember that Ryzen loves faster RAM, so who knows what you could expect if you were using say 3000 MHz memory or even 3200 MHz memory. Geekbench 4 also fared very similar. The Ryzen 3 chip fell behind the i5 at stock, as one would expect, but it's like overclocking the 1200 completely transforms it. Again, it outdid my i5-4460 by 600 points or so in the multi-threaded test and even slipped past it in the single test. Very impressive. As you can probably tell, a lot of my time is spent editing and rendering, so it was only natural I tested out rendering a clip in Premiere Pro. The footage in question is some gameplay from Fallout 3 that will be rendered at 1080p 60fps. The clip is 30 seconds long. The i5 set the target of 24 seconds. At stock, the Ryzen rendered the clip in just 35 seconds, but at 3.8GHz it slashed 6 seconds of the time, completing it in 29. A great result for this budget processor. As we move on to the gaming results, I'll keep the i5 scores on screen for reference, but I won't talk about them. The limelight here should definitely be on the Ryzen 3. The on-screen footage is from the R3 overclocked, and the GTX 1060 is the graphics card I use today. Keep your eye on how close the $100 Ryzen got to my old Haswell chip across these few games. CSGO first with 1080p and the low settings. At stock we saw an average of 183, but at 3.8GHz 225 was the recorded result. An extra 40 plus frames is a nice bonus, even if it isn't really necessary here. GTA 5 next with the very high settings to see 75 on average. MSAA was off as it just chews up resources. There was no stutter or anything to speak of here and as I jumped back into the game with the Ryzen overclocked, I saw a healthy increase to 86. The 2016 title Hitman also saw a nice increase from 49 to 56, although if you take a look at the 0.1% lows, you'll see that that indicates some stuttering. Quite a bit of stuttering to be honest, something which occurred across all results despite the in-game settings which we finally decided to set to high as per the game's recommendation. 
Finally, Just Cause 3 ran very well at high settings too, with an increase from 89 to 98. The minimum figures didn't differ too much and there was no real issue here, but I will say that some stutter was noticeable on the Ryzen. If you look at the R3 on its own though, I really think it proved its worth among the budget hardware market, and I think it's a fantastic option if you're building a new system, not to mention that overclocking it really seems to bring out its inner beast. I should mention some temperatures as well, idling and underload at stock saw 35 and 56 respectively, whereas at 3.8GHz 38 idle and 67 degrees load were the norm, but I should tell you that my room is pretty warm, around 26 to 30 degrees Celsius. This was with the included Wraith Stealth cooler. You don't need an aftermarket one if I'm honest, and I'm not done with this bad boy just yet. So if I haven't covered something you want to see with Ryzen, just let me know, and we'll be putting together a budget build with this chip very soon. As for now though, thanks for watching, leave a like or dislike depending on how you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.